Hey everyone, welcome back. This is part 11 of my React Redux and Webpack series. I promise we're getting towards the end, so I think there'll be a few more videos after this, but hopefully we keep it, you know, under part 14 or 15, that'd be nice. In my last video, we learned how to separate our reducers into multiple reducers that handle separate parts of the state tree and then get combined together. This is also going to be a video geared towards a more advanced Redux usage and it's going to be dealing with asynchronous code. Now there really are no best practices um, in general in this whole React Redux community yet. It's still new and there's still a lot that's being figured out. One of the issues early on with React was with this unidirectional data flow with Flux how do we perform asynchronous code? And asynchronous code just means uh, code that gets run at a later time, and then um, you know you need to do something. You perform an action or invoke a function at a later time. And how do we handle that? So how do we handle, let's say, a server call? We want uh, data. We want to fire an action. So like a user, maybe maybe instead of updating with a random ID, we update with an ID from the server. So when we click this, we want to dispatch an action, but we want that action to be dispatched after we make a server call, which is asynchronously done. Um, so let's look at our code right now about how this is working. Um, we have our user info component, and this is where we, we have that button to update with a random ID. And basically what we're doing is we're, we're just calling our, our action. We're dispatching our action. And our action is just uh, an object gets returned right away. So as soon as that object gets returned, it gets sent to, um, it gets sent to the store and it gets sent to the reducers. But what if we don't want that to happen right away? What if we want to do some async server call and then as the callback basically like on success then we want to return then we want to dispatch the action so basically we want to delay uh, you know dispatch this with type yada yada you get it. you get the idea so um, how, how do we how do we go about that well uh, the creator of Redux which by the way his name is Dan Abramov Dan Abramov, excuse me. Uh, this is his uh, GitHub profile. He's he's really cool. Uh, he he wrote a lot of helper libraries around uh, the Redux ecosystem, and one of them is called Redux Thunk, and it's just a middleware for Redux. So if you'll recall from some of my earlier videos, uh, when we configure our store, we compose together um, the store, and we can add middleware because a store basically is just getting actions and um, getting dispatching them and getting new states. So in this process, we can apply middleware. As an example of this is our logger. Our logger just logs out actions as they happen. Um, so we can, we can apply multiple middlewares uh, to our Redux store, which is great. And one of them is Thunk, Redux Thunk. Uh, it's its own library, so we'll be installing it and using it. Um, here's a, a general exam uh, definition of what a thunk is, but basically it's a function that wraps an expression to delay its evaluation. So it's basically, uh, it's a function that returns another function. Uh, basically, it allows us to do that, and then it allows uh, the dispatcher to be dispatched at a later time. So. Here's an example of an action that we've been writing. It returns an object right away. Here's an example of an async where we return a function. So instead of returning an object, we return a function. And the middleware, the thunk middleware, is what is looking at all of these actions. And if it's an object, it evaluates it immediately. It dispatches it immediately. Whereas if it's a function, it passes in dispatch or even passes in the get state function to allow us to know what the current state is. And then inside of here, we can do all of our async stuff. So um, in that way, 
uh, we can delay the dispatch. So in this case, it's a set timeout of a thousand. Set timeout results in an asynchronous code. And so on the, the function that gets evaluated uh, by set timeout a thousand milliseconds later will be the dispatched increment. And this is just a way of, uh, we don't have to write the object in here. We just dispatch the immediate uh, action creator down here. Um, the other example here is we want to only dispatch based on the current state. So we want to check the state and we want to check the counter property on state. And if it's, uh, if it's even, we just return out. We don't dispatch anything. And if it's if not, then we dispatch our, our increment thing. So let's uh, introduce some pretty contrived examples where we do use set timeout, but this is a great example for how you would do a server call. And I'll talk about that a little bit when we get there. And maybe we'll do one where we check, check the state or something like that. So, uh, So the way we have our code written right now, we have, uh, we have this is an immediately uh, dispatched action, which is create new user ID that's random. Um, let's, let's kind of follow this example um, where uh, we will increment, um, we'll have one uh, action that, that gets a new user ID only if the current user ID is an even number. Uh, and then uh, we'll keep a button that will just do it no matter what. Uh, and then uh, we'll also do one uh, asynchronously. So kind of just keeping with these examples on the Redux Thunk library. So the first, ex first thing we can do is we can go ahead and npm install save Redux Thunk. Cool, so we check our package.json, Redux Thunk is there. Great, so in our store where we apply middleware, we can go ahead and import Thunk from Redux Thunk, and then we can uh, just add it to uh, I think it has to be an array like that. Let's let's make sure. I made some changes here. Save that. Let's get our server up and running. Just make sure. Whoops. Nope. Something's wrong. Middleware is not a function. Maybe this isn't an array. Yeah, okay. So when you apply the apply middleware, it doesn't take in an array, it just takes in a list of middlewares. Cool, so we've got Thunk up and running. Um, so now basically anytime an action comes in, the, the Thunk middleware is going to see if it's just an object or just or a function. And if it's a function, then it'll pass in dispatch and get state to that function and we can we can then act on it as we as we wish. So let's make uh, create new user ID if odd. So this is going to be a function that is going to instead of returning an object, it's going to return a function. And that function is going to get the dispatch and the get state. Uh, functions from the store Whoops. and what we want to do then is we want to pull out um, 
user. So this is kind of like that import syntax. Uh, constant user equals uh, gets date. Is that how he did it? I'm kind of cheating here. Yeah, so it, this syntax allows us to pull out uh, the user property of the state, which will get returned from here. Uh, we then, um, there's a comma here, get rid of that error. Uh, we then want to check if user ID is uh, odd, or if we check if it's even, then uh, we can just return out. So if user.id modulo 2 is 0. So this means that if you divide it by 2 and the remainder, this is uh, the modulus, which gives you the remainder. So if there is no remainder, it means it was divisible by 2. We just return out. Uh, and so if we don't return out and keep going, then what we can do is we can use the dispatcher, which we have as, as, <laughs> access to. And what we can do is then we can then just invoke our action creator that will get invoked immediately. So uh, we'll just do this and invoke it. Cool. So now that that's uh, new user ID if odd. So we have to make sure that we want to have a button in our user info component that handles the if odd. So let's copy this. This dot handle new ID if odd. Uh, and update only if odd. Cool. So now we need a handle new if odd function that's going to handle this. And what this is going to do is just fire off the create new user ID if odd. And of course, we need this to be passed down. Right now, we're only passing down this. Let's um, just pass down all the actions to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. And then uh, our user info component now has this dot props dot actions dot and this dot props dot actions dot. Cool. So that's all up and running. Is our server up? It is. Let's see what's going on. So we have an update with random. And we have an update only if odd. So so here's an odd number. Ah, cool. We get an error. Create new user ID is not defined. So uh, this error was occurring in the actions.36. So it's when we actually tried to dispatch our action. And uh, I believe we might need to see these are properties on this actions object that we are exporting, so we might need to reference the actual action itself. Uh, let's see. Let's see if that helps things. Okay, so our update only if odd worked, but now it's an even number. So if we click on this, it's not updating. If we click on this, oops, get another odd number, and we get an update. And update, and update, Wow, lots of odd. Here's an even. It doesn't work. So uh, that's an example of how we can perform an action based on the current state. Let's see how we perform an action asynchronously. So let's go to our user info. Let's add another button. Oops. Uh, handle uh, new ID async. And then this is going to be update async. Uh, and so we need this this guy, and this is going to be this dot props dot actions, and we're going to eventually call it create new user ID async. Cool. And then in our actions, we're going to create new user ID async. We're not going to be checking the get state, so we don't have to write it in there. So we're returning a function, so the fung is going to catch it, pass in dispatch to it, and then we can do something. So what do we want to do? Well, 
we want to do a set timeout. So the set timeout makes an asynchronous call and the first parameter it takes in is a function and uh, we can just make this an anonymous function um, and what we want to happen is we want to dispatch a new user ID action. The second parameter, this is the first parameter here, the second parameter is the time we want to wait, so let's wait Let's wait two and a half seconds, 2500 milliseconds. Cool. Error because we need a comma here. Great. So now we have this async thing going on here. Uh, let's refresh just to make sure everything's up. So if we update to random, this works. Only if odd does not work. Let's get an odd number. That works. Now let's see update async. I'm going to click it and we'll see if in about two seconds it updates. Cool, we get an error. Cannot read property actions of undefined in user info. Uh, line 14. Ah, this.prop.actions. Cool, so save that. H, uh, the uh, hot module reloaded. Let's see, click. Boom. About two and a half seconds later. Click, one, two and a half. There you go. So that's the Redux Thunk library, and these are pretty trivial contrived examples. But how you'd want to use this moving forward is this would be used as a server call. So this would return dispatch, and then instead of doing a set timeout, uh, you would do something um, like a server call. So you would do like some type of uh, Ajax or some type of get request um, with some URL and then you know um, takes in like I, f I forget the exact syntax but you'll have a success uh, handler and this will be a function that gets fired whenever there's a successful server call and that successful server call will generally have like uh, you know, it'll be it'll have a response. So you'll have like some response and some data that you want, and you will you can then because you have access to the dispatch at whenever this success function comes back, it calls back and fires. You will be able to dispatch, uh, you know, some action that you've created, like you know, create new user ID uh, and pass in the data that it needs or or what have you. Um, these. The create new user ID didn't take in data, but like our deleting and completing to dos did take in an ID. And so that's how you would make a server call uh, before you actually dispatch an action. Cool, so that's, uh, let's get rid of this. Uh, yeah, so that is it for this video. This was all about uh, Redux Thunk middleware. In my next video, I will talk about styling, how to do it, and what are some uh, best practices, uh, if there are any. And then in the video after that, we'll deal with development and production environments with Webpack and all of this stuff. So until then, enjoy, and see you in a bit.